so. Could the Biden administration have done more to prevent Russia's invasion of Ukraine? Let's ask Fox News contributor and retired acting ICE director Tom Homan. Tom, great to have you. You heard in Griff's report, Nancy Pelosi referred to the brilliance of one Joe Biden. Do you think this response and lead up to Ukraine has been brilliant? No, I don't. And, you know, first of all, I think you know, this would never happen. In my opinion, it would never happen under a Trump presidency. I think President Trump and Mike Pompeo, they project a strength across the world. I think uh, uh, Putin and other world leaders are aggressive, have looked at the results of the Biden administration this year, what he has done. I think they know he's underwater. I think they, they watched the Afghanistan withdrawal was, was a travesty. And I think, look, it, and you sent Kamala Harris to the Munich uh, Security Conference. She, she felt everything she's touched. I just don't think he took it serious. President Biden took this serious enough at the very beginning and was tougher in the very beginning. Again, I'll say this. My personal opinion is this was never happened under President Trump and Mike Pompeo because they always project his strength. I'd like to know that the White House and Biden White House even reach out to Mike Pompeo and get, you know, get his background, what he's done on, on this subject. I doubt it because this White House is against everything Trump and anybody that supports Trump. Let's get down to specifics. What were the key ways that Joe Biden failed when he came to deploy? I think it should have been tougher up front. I think, you know, all, all the, the, you know, you can take money from Russia, but when you start putting sanctions on, they need to be hard things at the beginning. He should have had a conversation very beginning. I think, I think you could have made clear with the other NATO uh, countries, what is it, what is exactly the plan for Ukraine? Are they going to be part of NATO or not? I mean, that was up in the air up to the very, right up to the very end. So I think there should have been more communication. There should have been, you know, uh, uh, gather the, the other NATO countries and, and talk to Putin as a group of a group of NATO countries rather than Joe Biden dancing around the subject. I think in the beginning, when you announce sanctions, they need to be hard sanctions. and needs to be before he takes military action. I think it's a little too late, a little too, a little too little, a little too late. The past is the past. Going forward, is there anything Joe Biden can do diplomatically at this point? No, I don't think so. I mean, I, I think the one thing he has done, he has gathered other countries, and the other countries are going to take a hard line on Russia. I think the other countries need to, need to embrace more sanctions and more response to, uh, to Putin. The one thing that concerns me is, is, is uh, the hundreds of thousands of refugees leaving that I'm sure the United States response to that is going to send more of our resources over there to deal with the screening of the refugees. We see how bad that went in Afghanistan, and I'm hoping if, if we're going to get involved in that, in the hearing, we're already talking about sending CBP resources over there. When we got a southwest border out of control, they're, they're once again going to see, send CBP resources to help with the vetting, help with the, the processing. And I think that when they did in Afghanistan, it was a mess. I don't think vetting was done properly, and I hope they're learning a lesson if they're going to get involved in refugee processing. They do a hell of a lot better job than they did the last time. Yeah, let's focus on refugees now. Do you expect an influx of refugees here in the U.S.? I would think that I would think a lot of them want to come to the U.S. And I think Joe Biden has shown that he's willing to accept unlimited amount of refugees. I think the plan. The, my my inside sources say there's there's discussion now going on about who they're going to send over to handle it. And there's also discussion about sending CBP resources. CBP, the Customs Border Protection, were sent to help with the Afghanistan debacle. And I think uh, again, with our border out of control, Joe Biden has no interest in securing the border. He's going to have no problem taking limited resources from our southern border and send them over to help with the processing refugees. In your notes to our producers, you talked about this very issue, the vetting of these refugees and the potential for Vladimir Putin to interject Russian counter agents in those groups of refugees to infiltrate the U.S. What can we do to stop that? Look, the, the vetting, a, a proper vetting can take up to 18 months. And I think I think the State Department needs to be heavily involved. We think they have need to access to numerous databases, intelligence databases, including DOD databases. I think the question has always been with the Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas, did you do proper vetting of these people along with the State Department? I think the answer is Many of them were not done. And when they got to the United States, a lot, a lot of people showed up in the United States from Afghanistan, didn't have one piece of paper, no identification documents. There was no uh, a presence in the Ukraine. There was no, uh, excuse me, in Afghanistan. No Afghanistan government was there. The Taliban was in charge. So who, who's going to verify birth, birth certificates? Who's going to verify who these people are there? So you need to have in place 
uh, uh, officials from that country that can verify who these people are. Are the birth certificates authentic? Do you have any derogatory information on them? So that I hope the Biden administration does a hell of a lot better job than it did the last. Because I can tell you, my source from the inside that did the vetting on Afghanistan told me that proper vetting was not done before these people will even hit the U.S. mainland. And like you said, if they do end up sending CCP agents to Ukraine and the general area to vet people, you know that's going to be yet another excuse for this administration to ignore the crisis at our southern border, if they could possibly ignore it any more than they already have. Tom Homan, we appreciate your time. As always, thank you, sir. Carly. All right, breaking.